Well, hi, and welcome to day 10 of our reading of the Gospel according to Luke in December. It's December 10th, so we're reading chapter 10 on our way to the end of Luke, chapter 24, Christmas Eve, on our way to Christmas. Well, last time we read Luke chapter 9, and that chapter ended with Jesus kind of giving a warning regarding the cost of discipleship. Three times in Luke chapter 9, he foretells his demise on the earth. He talks about how the Son of Man is going to be turned over, how he's going to be um, betrayed and turned into the hands of men, and, and that he's ultimately going to be put to death, but that he'll rise again. And so certainly him preaching his message of the kingdom of God in the world was a threat to those in authority at the time, both religious and political. And so he's warning his disciples regarding counting the cost associated with being a disciple. And certainly there is a cost. You're not going to be a friend of the world if you're a friend of Jesus Christ. And that could even extend to your family or to your friends or to your co-workers. And you may find yourself on the outside um, in those relationships because you've chosen to follow Jesus and having done so, you've become the light of the world. And as the light of the world, you're now bringing the presence of Jesus into those relationships. And some people just may not be able to handle that. Uh, they may feel the conviction from your very presence, not that you're trying to shame them or judge them or cause them to feel bad in any way. In fact, you'd love for them to uh, know Jesus like you know him. You love them. But uh, they may not be able to handle that. And there may be rifts in those relationships that form. And you need to be ready for that. That's part of counting the cost of being a follower of Jesus. Well, this brings us to chapter 10. So let's pray and we'll get into our reading for today. And Lord, I thank you, God, that we always have a friend in you. Lord, that you promised you would never leave us nor forsake us. And so we thank you. We praise you for your faithfulness in that, O oh God. I pray you be with us now, Lord, as we open up your word. Help us to see you more clearly, Lord. And seeing you, Lord, to see ourselves uh, more clearly, that we might understand how we need to repent, how we need to be transformed in order to glorify you with our lives. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed seventy others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. But wherever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick there, and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its street and say, The very dust of your city which clings to us we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. He who hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, 
I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it, and to hear what you hear and have not heard it. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is your reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Do this, and you will live. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and set him on his animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend when I come again, I will repay you. So which of these three do you think was neighbor to the one who fell among the thieves? And he said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain city, a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. This is God's word. Some interesting things in this chapter, something that really jumped out at me, was right at the beginning when it says, After these things the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them, sent them out two by two. I mean, when I think about the time of Jesus, I think about the 12, of course, the apostles. But I don't think of 70 more disciples being commissioned by Jesus, given power to cast out demons, given power to heal the sick. And it says they went out to all the cities all the places where he was going to go. These were like like an advanced team. Like he sent them out to kind of make the way. Kind of like John the Baptist, who was a herald. And so just imagine 70 men going out into all these surrounding villages, doing all these miraculous deeds by God's power in advance of Jesus showing up. And, and when they came back, I mean, justifiably so, they were pretty excited about that. And they rejoiced, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. 
But Jesus does something very interesting. He doesn't like start just giving high fives to all these guys. He gets very sober. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And I give you the power to do this. It's true. But don't rejoice in that power. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. What a sober warning. What a sober warning. I can tell you, being filled with the Spirit, coming to Jesus Christ, there's real power associated with that. Um, it, there's confidence. There's understanding. There's discernment. There's the gift of the word of knowledge. There's, there's knowing things that other people are just not going to know. Understanding things that other people are not going to understand because you know God's word and you're filled with his spirit. It, it's possible to get arrogant in this. It's possible to get proud. It's possible to see yourself better than other people because you have these powers that God has indeed given you. It's real. Jesus warns here. He warns us to be humble. He warns us to understand the situation. Any power that we have is power that's his power. It's, it's on loan, if you will, from him. And the thing that we should be rejoicing about is that we've been chosen by him. Chosen for salvation. Our names are written in heaven. And not to uh, get big-headed because we're Christians. Um, the Christian should be the most humble person of all. Consider our Lord. Um, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Again, another challenge. This uh, This... Um, a lawyer came to him uh, proud in his righteousness, in his knowledge. And Jesus reduces him down to size by telling him this, this story, this parable of, of a Samaritan, uh, uh, someone that the, the Jews would not have had regard for. But the Samaritan was the neighbor to the injured and wounded man. And so Jesus was talking to that lawyer and and he's telling him, look, the priest, the Levite, these guys were too high-minded. Too high-minded to help a man in need. But a Samaritan was willing to do it. Willing to be the neighbor to the man. He's warning against partiality or racism or anything else that would put us high-minded above other people. He's calling for humility. And I love how he deals with Martha there and it says, Martha, you're troubled by many things, but Mary has chosen the one needed thing. And isn't that what we need to, to, to rest from our weary lives and to sit at the feet of Jesus like we're doing right now? What a blessing this is. Well, there's Luke chapter 10. Look forward to tomorrow, December 11th, when we can read Luke chapter 11 together. So be well. And until then... God bless you.